You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm really excited. I've got an awesome video for you today. We're going to talk about how you can get out on the course, step over top of one of those iron shots and be completely confident that you're going to hit the ball solid. You're not gonna chunk, you're not gonna thin the ball, you're not gonna hit it way to the right, way to the left. You're gonna make that really crisp, clean contact. We're gonna go over three of the most important things to do that, and it all starts with covering the ball. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about how you can cover that golf ball and really compress it. Now let's dive right into it. How do we cover the golf ball? And first, let me talk about what the wrong way to do this is, which would be a flip or a scoop. And I think a lot of times people misinterpret. They think that you try to flip or scoop to get the ball up in the air. So if I'm flipping this golf ball or my hands are flipping, a lot of times what I've found is this is an effort for power. So we're gonna talk about how to be powerful without flipping that. But if I flip one here, you're gonna see how my hands are leaning back and it makes it really difficult to hit the ball solid. So there, I tried to hit it solid but I scooped it a little bit. I picked it clean off the ground, kind of thinned it. I came up a good 20 yards short of the green and it really just didn't have that compression that I really want on there. It feels more powerful because I'm pushing my wrist at the golf ball or I'm pushing my wrist, which would be this way toward the target. That feels like that should speed up the club head, but that's actually not the right way to speed up the club head. If we cover the golf ball, we can get that club head to accelerate under its own power to really whip through contact and make golf a lot easier. So the first move, let's go over that again here. If I'm flipping, I'm taking my right palm, my right hand, and I'm pushing it toward the target. If you look at the, the muscles on the inside of your forearm, those are flexing to get you to push your hand forward toward the target. A lot of times also when that hand pushes forward, I run out of room here and my arms will start to chicken wing or my left elbow will bend as I come into the follow through. That's from that pushing type motion. Now, again, like I said, that seems powerful. I'm using a lot more muscular force here, but I'm not creating the acceleration that I want in the club head. Now, if we cover the golf ball, and all that means is you can kind of think of the loft on this club face at address as being up into the sky. What you're gonna feel like is you're turning this loft down and you're gonna cover that loft on top of the golf ball. So if I'm looking at this from address, I'm feeling like, this is the sensation I have in my mind, is that I'm covering and I'm taking this golf club and covering it on top of the golf ball like that. That's a sensation. Again, it's not exactly what's happening, but that's a feeling. You'll also feel like your right hand, your right palm, instead of flipping, it's gonna feel like the right palm of your hand covers on top of that golf ball also. So I'm really getting my body, my hand. You'll notice that my posture is on top of that golf ball. I'm not standing up out of the shot like this. Everything is covering on top of that. So it's the club face covering it, it's the right palm covering it, and it's the fact that I'm still in my posture covering on top of the golf ball, which is where that term covering the golf ball, compressing the golf ball, really, you know, uh, uh, almost like de-lofting the club comes from. So why, how could that create a lot of speed? It doesn't seem like that's gonna be very powerful. It seems like it should be more powerful to really flip that club on through there. This actually happens because when you're in this covering type position, you're actually still releasing the club. The club is on the way to releasing, but it's the fact that you still have this forward shaft lean that allows you to whip that club on through. So if I can imagine here, let me take a club that has forward shaft lean on it and let me pull the butt into this grip up. Watch what happens to the club head. It really accelerates on through there. A very small amount of force on the butt end of this club can get that club to whip on through. The only way I can do that though is to have some lag in forward shaft lean as I'm starting down. So here, as I'm starting my downswing, there's a couple things I want you to feel. Number one, I want you to feel like your right wrist is bent back, really, really bent back. Number two, and this is very important, I want you to feel like you're swinging inside out or out to the right. I almost feel like when you're swinging this club, if I'm facing the camera here, I'm swinging the club this way, about 45 degrees out to the right. As I open my body, that's gonna allow that club to square up. All right, so that's the first two pieces, wrist back, swinging out to the right. And then number three, I still wanna be releasing this golf club, but I wanna release it in front of this golf ball. So if I put a golf ball kind of down my target line here, say four or five feet in front, I'm imagining that I'm going from this covered position 
to releasing that golf ball, and now I've gotten rid of all these wrist angles up here. That allows me to get this compression on the golf ball at contact and still release it to get the speed. Now, let's put those pieces together. On the first couple reps, I want you to do five or six of these while you're practicing. Focus only on the right wrist. The right wrist is staying back, and I'm gonna feel like I keep my body rotating all the way through to a good full finish to accelerate all the way around. So here, I'm really gonna feel like my right wrist is back. That club is covering on top of it, and I'm gonna accelerate to a good full finish position. Let's see if we can hit a nice one here. There we go, that one's right at the flag. Just probably 10 feet right of the flag, hit that one nice and solid. So there, again, the right wrist is back. I'm still getting speed because my, I'm naturally gonna release out in front. The second five or 10 reps I want you to do here, we're gonna focus in on that inside out motion that we mentioned. So if we start to come over the top and feel like we have this big lag angle, I'm gonna start chopping down into it. To be nice and shallow and thin and kit that ball cleanly off the ground, I need to have the sensation that I'm swinging this way, out to the right. It's only when my body opens up, and you can see as my hips start to open, that's gonna square that up to where I'm swinging toward the target. A lot of players keep their hips square, and they hit at it with their hands and arms, with their wrist. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna have the momentum of the body, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, carry it through there. So the sensation is I'm swinging out to the right, and since my body's opening up, that actually squares me up going toward the target. So this second five or so reps, to get a little more comfortable with it, right wrist back, you're swinging to the right and you're gonna let your opening body square everything up. So let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, another good one. Just barely left of the flag on that one. I actually hit that one too good, that's gonna be a little long. Yeah, just about 10 or 15 feet past the flag. Now, from there, let's go to the last piece here this releasing out in front, which is the last key to covering the golf ball. Now, if I'm covering this golf ball, again, the misconception a lot of players have is they're gonna get this wrist angle here, I'm gonna be down, and then I'm just gonna hold all that off. If I do that, I lose tons of speed. I need to release this golf club toward that golf ball out in front. So I'm gonna have these same ideas, these same sensations. Wrist back, swinging out to the right, but when I go ahead and swing through, I'm gonna go ahead and let that all release. Everything's going out in front of this golf ball. I'm gonna let all that energy from the club release toward the target. And that's also what keeps it really square as you're coming through. That nice square face gliding through the golf ball, going out toward the target, that's gonna make things a lot easier. If I feel like I'm holding off on it, it's gonna open, I'm gonna block it to the right. A lot of bad stuff's gonna happen. So I have to go ahead and let that club head go as I'm making this swing. Let's give that one a whirl. There we go, another one nice on the green, just a little right of the flag. So those are really gonna help you to what's called cover or compress the golf ball, those three areas there. That's just the first piece. I got some really, more, another few great tips that are gonna help you to build on this and get your game even more consistent. Okay, so that's a covering of the golf ball. That's really gonna help to get those wrist angles really good. Now let's talk about how we can get a lot of that, you know, feeling like you're pushing again, that flipping, that scooping, like the arms are doing all the work. How do we get away from that and get the momentum coming from the body? And there's actually a pretty common mistake that brings us to our second key, which is if we're gonna be a really good iron player, we have to let the body build the momentum and then the arm just add a little speed to it. So to get that momentum from the bottom, from the body, the body has to continue to rotate through the shot. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that if we wanna cover this golf ball, it's the forward shaft lean from the club, which is actually gonna be releasing past the golf ball. That's completely fine, that's what we want. It's this right wrist at impact being kind of angled back, feeling like your palm is covering the golf ball, and then that's releasing after impact. And then third, I mentioned that your upper body or your posture, you have to be kind of down where your upper body's feeling like it's on top of this golf ball, which is gonna help you to feel that sensation of covering that. Now, what most players do, what they get wrong, is that when they're hitting this iron shot, they tend to let their hips come forward, their upper body comes up and back, and now all of a sudden, if I was to have this covered motion to really have the forward shaft lean, I couldn't reach the golf ball. All right, if I was covered, I'd be here, but if I stand up out of my posture, all of a sudden I can't reach the golf ball. So what do I do to solve this problem? I start to flip and scoop, like we talked about we don't wanna do earlier, and that creates all that bad contact. So if we wanna get the momentum from the body, there's two things that have to happen here. 
We have to get it in a position to where I can be down and covered and stay in my posture, but then still have everything moving on through. That's where the big key comes in. A lot of players that try to cover the golf ball, what they'll do is they'll stay down in their posture, but then they just stay down in there forever, right? So it ends up being all arms, it doesn't work, and it feels terrible. What we actually wanna have happen here is, as I start my downswing, if you imagine my belt buckle, if there's a laser shooting out of that, as I start my downswing, I want that to be going down toward the golf ball. So my hips are kinda of down toward the golf ball, my chest is down toward the golf ball, but then as I finish my swing, now all that comes up. My belt buckle's facing up toward the target. My chest is nice and high. If I had a laser shooting out of my shirt buttons, it would be nice and high here. And I'm coming all the way along around. My chin's even nice and high. That allows me to complete the swing. And that's when I actually have extension. So early extension, as a lot of people call it, or what would be the opposite of covering the golf ball, is when my upper body extends early. It extends in the downswing as I'm coming into the golf ball. The proper extension or later extension would be I'm coming down, covering the golf ball, and then I extend up as I come through the fall through. The cool thing about this, it ties in with exactly what we talked about when we took this butt in the club and we let it whip through the ball. If I get a bunch of this lag, and now I'm down in my posture, as I extend up, I'm taking this grip and I'm pulling it up that allows the club to whip on through with a ton of momentum. Now I could use the momentum of my body. Now I can use my hips and the big muscles of my body to carry that club through there. So let's try this out. Do another five or 10 reps for me. As you start your downswing, feel like everything, until your left arm is about halfway in the downswing, feel like everything's getting closer to the ground. My belt buckle's down, my chest is down, everything's down. I feel like I'm really gonna be close to this ball covering on top of it. And then as you finish, so we're gonna pause in that position a few times. So go back to your setup, pause and fill that position. And then as I finish, I'm letting everything whip on through. Now my belt buckle's up, my chest is up, my chin is up, and I'm coming to that good full finish position. Five or 10 of those, just pausing in each piece. Pause here, and then pause in the good full finish. You're gonna to start to build that muscle memory. And what you're gonna feel, the sensation I get, is almost like my body is doing a lot of the momentum and the club is just swinging along. My club and arms are just swinging with the momentum of our body. Like we talked about early, those hands swinging out to the right. As my body momentum opens up, that squares the face. That gets this club really working with us rather than against us. So let's try that out again. Watch as I first start my downswing, my chest feels like it's getting closer to the ground, then I'm coming to that good full finish. Let's give it a whirl, see if I can cover this one and really let that club release out in front of this golf ball. All right, nice and solid, definitely covered it. You can see I stayed in my posture. All right, so we covered piece number one. We gotta cover the ball. We gotta really compress it. Piece number two, we gotta create momentum from the body by using those hips and really coming through to that good full finish. And piece number three, we have to make sure that we're shallow and we don't chop down into this golf ball. If we start to come start a downswing and our butt into the club, imagine there's a laser pointing out of this. It's pointing inside the golf ball. Now all of a sudden I'm gonna chop down into this, or again, if I feel myself starting to come down really steeply, what's the natural thing? I bet you're a really good athlete and you do this without even having to think about it. You start down a little steep and then to shallow that out, you let the hips come forward, you let the body back out, and then all of a sudden you flip a little bit to keep yourself from slamming this club down into the, into the golf, into the ground. What we have to do now is to shallow that club out. So if I was making a swing here, and I paused again kind of in the first half of my downswing, I want the butt end of that club to be pointing either, if we're looking from down the line, either at the golf ball or a little outside the golf ball so that now, again, as I extend on through, that club's coming nicely down the plane line and I can whip on through there, get that club to release in front without having to shallow it out. If I start down steep again, if I try to cover it, bam, I'm slamming down into the ground. So what you're naturally gonna do, if you start down steep, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna flip. So all these things tie into each other. Now you remember in the first part of this video, I talked about how you wanna have this sensation that you're swinging out to the right. This is really gonna pair up with what I'm about to talk about here. I wanna feel like that club is shallowed out there and it feels like I'm swinging out to the right. So if I pause myself halfway down and I didn't open my body at all, my body was square, I wanna feel like I'm in a position where I could swing this way. All right, that club would be really shallow here. 
I'm coming away from the inside. The only thing that squares that up is now, as my body rotates on through, that brings that club coming through and allows it to whip on through. So if you imagine, if I get this club way to the inside and I open up my body, look how that really whips the club on through. So I'm just opening my body and the momentum of the club wants it to whip through from shallow, shallow position. What I don't want to do here, if I was steep and I opened up my body, watch what's going to happen. That club's going to want to really get stuck under, really chop down. It's almost going to want to hit me. I'm working against the momentum of the club. If I'm shallow, I can open up and work with the momentum of the club. So here, I want you to make a couple practice swings, pause halfway down, and really feel like to you, before you're opening your hips, you're setting up to swing to this golf bag over here. I'm just gonna swing way to the right like that. If I was to hit a golf ball doing that, without opening my body, it would look something like this. Way over there, I think I probably hit that one in the water, almost 30, 45 degrees right. <clears throat> That's because I didn't let the momentum of my body open everything up. I'm gonna make that same swing now, but I'm gonna go ahead and open up my hips and that's gonna sling everything toward the target. That's a real big key there. Look at all the tour players. Look at their body at contact. You're not gonna see anybody in this position on the PGA Tour. You'll see a lot of guys that are opening the hips at contact, really finishing that swing coming back to the left. So the third key here is you're gonna feel like halfway down, the butt end of your club is pointing way out to the right and you're gonna feel like that club is nice and shallow, then you let your body open up to square back up the face. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, I might hit that one the best of any of them. All right, so let's recap on these really good keys. Number one, we wanna cover the ball. That happens from my right wrist, my club face, and my body all being on top of the golf ball. The big key there is that I can't hold this angle forever. I have to release that club after contact. I don't wanna be flipping into here. I wanna be feeling like that club swinging to the right and my right hand is covering on top of that golf ball. Number two, we have to use the momentum of the body. If I stop my momentum and I keep everything feeling like it's down toward the ground, I never come up out of that, I'm gonna to have to use all hands and arms. You're naturally not gonna do that. What you're gonna do is early extend and start to flip doing that. We don't wanna do that. We have to make sure that we get that nice squat. Everything is staying covered over top of the golf ball, but then as we come to the finish, we're really letting the belt buckle, the chest, the chin, everything come up. And again, that's gonna whip this club on through. Let the club do the work for you. Then number three, we can't be steep. If I start down and feel like my club shaft is steep like this, as I open up, that's gonna get me in a terrible position. I need to feel like I'm shallowing out, swinging way out to the right, and then let my opening body carry the club toward the target. If we do those three pieces, we're gonna put them all together, we're gonna hit those nice, crisp, clean golf shots, and you're gonna feel really, really confident when you're sitting over top of your iron shots. Hey guys, great to have you here, and today we're gonna to talk about how to really get these irons pure, and one of the biggest problems that I see with solid contact is just basically stopping the body and throwing the hands of the ball. We all struggle with it, but a lot of times we don't know what we're exactly supposed to be doing to fix this problem, to get that great forward shaft lane, to get the club releasing in front of the golf ball. How do we actually make that happen? That's exactly what we're gonna go over in this video. First, let me show you one that would be an incorrect iron swing where basically I'm stopping my body. Uh, if you look at tour players, when they come into contact, their hips are gonna be at least 45 degrees open, somewhere in that ballpark, right around there the shoulders are gonna be either square or slightly open. If I actually look at my square shoulders, so if I look at my, my shoulders appear to be square, that should probably be pretty close in this camera angle. My left shoulder is really protracted there. So if I'm looking actually from this face on camera, my left shoulder is protracted. If I take my left shoulder back and I look at where my rib cage is pointing, it's actually pointing in front of the golf ball too. And this all goes into what we call the straight line release. So as I'm releasing this club, I want it to release in front of this golf ball. I have forward shaft lean at contact. I release that club out in front. And the way that I can do this is to get my hips and my shoulders opening up as I'm coming through contact. You can imagine just like I was gonna take an iron and just throw it right down the fairway. So if I grab an iron, I'm gonna open up to where my hips and shoulders are opening. I'm just gonna toss this iron right down the fairway just like that. Probably wouldn't recommend doing that. You might break a club, but that's a sensation that you're having. 
opening the body and letting that club release in front. The golf ball is just getting in the way. That's all that's happening. So how do I do that? And what does it look like when I'm not doing that correctly? The incorrect swing is gonna be when my hips and shoulders stay more facing to the ball. The only way to keep the club moving forward from there, number one, I'm not gonna be able to get the forward shaft lean. And number two, I have to push my, arm, my club across my body. So my body's not leading the way anymore. If I keep pushing that club, I can either fold my left arm, that's where the chicken wing comes from. So if you're chicken winging, that's what's happening, the body's slowing down, you're pushing the club across your body. Or number two, if I try to get, if I, if I don't get the forward shaft lean, I'm not even worried about that, I can go ahead and flip the club, and now my club flips up very quickly, and I get that negative shaft lean, the club's almost leaning back at contact. So that's the good way and the bad way. Now let's talk about what's the sensation that I wanna have if I'm gonna do this correctly. So I like to start out with just tossing a few golf balls. This works for iron swings, works for driver swings, even pitching. If I'm gonna to toss a golf ball down the fairway, if I just ask you to toss one this way, the first thing you're gonna do is open up your body and you're just gonna to toss it in that direction. Everybody tosses the ball the same way. They let their body open and they just let it fly right down the middle. I tossed three of those balls, they're all within a couple feet of each other. Now, what would happen the other way, the wrong way, that's the right way, letting the body open, tossing that club down the fairway, ball just gets in the way. The wrong way would be me staying closed, getting very focused on trying to hit this golf ball. I'm keeping my body closed and now I'm, I'm doing that and I'm trying to throw the club or throw the ball across my body. Not gonna be very powerful when that's happening. So do a good 15 or 20 of those. They look kind of goofy, sit in your living room and toss them into the couch if you need to, but just get used to opening that body up. The second piece of that now is let's go ahead and do the same thing with our club. I want you to grab one. Again, you can do these from your living room. Let's make some fluid, smooth practice swings, getting that same sensation of tossing that ball down the fairway when that's happening. A lot of times people ask me, how do I know how many of these I'm supposed to do? Well, just keep doing them until you get comfortable. As soon as you're comfortable, you're ready to move on to the next piece. This final piece is gonna be coming down where we're out on the golf course. And I, what I want you to do is start out with some smooth swings, some nine to three swings. I'm gonna to switch to my iron. I'm using for this video, this is called the Voice Caddy Swing Caddy 2. So people ask me all the time what I'm using in the video. It's a fairly inexpensive radar, very accurate for getting your club head speed and your ball speed. And it's pretty cool. So I got that down here today. I'll put a link down below in the description. I always get asked where you can buy these things, but I'll put it down in the, in the description below this video um, if you guys are interested in that. And let's go ahead and put this to the test. We've opened the body. We've practiced doing that with a swing. Now, how do we do this in a real golf swing? Let's go ahead and make a half back swing. And then from there, I want you to really exaggerate getting that, that body to open up. Now, there's a few key checkpoints when you're, making, when you're looking at your video. So if you're videotaping your swing and you're checking that, I first wanna look at the obvious ones, which are let my left or my right heel lift a little bit up off the ground. If this heel stays down, look at my hips. If I let my heel come up, my hips open. As I put the heel down, my hips close. So that's gonna be the first checkpoint there. Right heel comes a little off the ground. At contact, your hips are gonna be open. And then the last piece with this, your right arm has to be a little bit more bent. So if I'm casting the club, what I'm doing is I'm extending that arm and I'm throwing the club with my right arm. Notice how my elbow pit is dead locked straight and that club is leaning backwards a little bit. If I get this, and you'll see how my hips are closed too. As I rotate on open, the more open I get with my body, look how this arm stays a little bit more bent now. I'm a little closer to the ground and to the ball also. That's where you can get that forward shaft lean. You also notice how my left arm feels like it's across my chest this way. If my left arm is here, to the side of my chest, then what I'm doing is I'm not opening. I'm staying square and I'm pushing the club. That's that chicken wing. When you chicken wing, that left arm pops off the chest. So left arm against the chest, right arm a little bit bent. Do a few more practice swings when you get to the driving range. Practicing that, just feeling like you're brushing the turf as you're doing that. So again, the checkpoints are right heel comes off the ground, hips are open, left arm across the chest, right arm a little bit bent, and then that's when you're gonna get the forward shaft lean. Now from here, we've got these key checkpoints, we've done the practice swings. Let's go ahead and do about a half back swing and really feel like we accelerate on through this shot. There we go, I feel like I really opened up on that one. My radar said 88 miles an hour of club head speed. I know that was probably a little past halfway back, but I really wanted to exaggerate in these short swings opening up more and more. So I'm gonna try to 
swing a little bit faster than that this time. I'm going to go a little farther back. And again, I'm going to really exaggerate opening up and accelerating through that golf ball. So a little bit more than a half back swing on this one. There we go. That felt really nice. Great acceleration, 96 miles an hour club head speed. And then finally, the reason I'm starting slow here is I want to get comfortable with slower swings and then I can build up longer and longer swing. So start out by working on these positions slow, gradually get longer and longer with more club head speed. Finally here, the last one, <clears throat> let's see if we can get the seven iron almost up to 100 miles an hour club head speed. That would be pretty good. I think PJ Tour average is low 90s or so. So this would be really nice if I could get this body opening up, really accelerating on through there with some good forward shaft lane. Uh, that's about as good as I'm gonna do. I don't know if I made it or not. Yep, 101, so pretty good club head speed. Again, that Voice Caddy 2, really nice. They sent me these, I've tested a lot. There's a great little device to work on your club head speed as you're swinging. So work on that drill, slow to fast, hit those key checkpoints. Man, you're gonna really be compressing the golf ball. All right, I have a pitching wedge out here with a 150 yard marker, and I'm gonna talk about one of the most powerful drills that you can do to get the most distance out of your irons. And it's actually really counterintuitive. I'm gonna feel like I slam my club into the ground, kind of where this orange stick is going. And then I'm gonna rotate through just like the pros are doing, and I can get some crazy distance. I can't wait to share it with you because I know it's gonna be one of the best iron drills that you'll see. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, hit that one good. Q's got my flight scope X3 radar out. What do we see with the distance there? 157.5. So 157 yards of the pitching wedge. I can't wait to show you how to get that same kind of power in your swing. All right, so let's talk about one of the, the things that I see that just kills everybody's swing speed with their irons. And what happens here is we turn off our body. We don't get a lot of rotation through the shot. I see almost all players doing this. Then the hands and arms have to take over and kind of flip and push the club past their body. Ideally, what we'd have is tons of lag, really load the angle of this club up, and then rotate on through the ball as fast as we can. And as that lag releases, it's gonna be releasing in front of the golf ball. That gets the whip of the lag release, that lag in the, or, uh, releasing through the shot. That gets that, that club to kind of whip through contact and also gets you all the power from your bot body rotating through. Let me go ahead and walk you through kind of uh, an intuitive or counterintuitive drill. It's actually gonna get you these correct feelings. I promise you, you've probably never seen this before and it's definitely not something that you would have come up with on your own. It was always surprising when I first saw this drill. So this is a, a drill from Harry Varden way back. You know, I don't, I don't know what it'd be, late 1800s, early 1900s when Varden kind of came on the scene. The drill from a, a couple of his books, I've seen this drill mentioned a few times online, but it's a really cool drill. Basically what you would do is set up with your golf ball normal stance, normal ball position. And then I would put kind of a club going down the target line toward where I'm hitting the golf ball through the center of my feet. That's gonna be kind of where the, the center of this would be. And then I'm gonna put another stick kind of pointing toward the golf ball. Now the angle of this stick doesn't matter that much. It could be, you know, this angle. It could be that angle. It's just kind of a general idea of what you wanna be doing when you're making this swing. Now, what I'm gonna be feeling here is I'm gonna feel like as I make my downswing, my body's gonna rotate open. I'm letting my body whip on through, but I feel like I'm slamming my club, my club and arms down, kind of lined up with this orange stick. So I'm slamming my arms down and I'm rotating through and that's what squares it up. Now, a great way to feel this, if you have an impact bag, you can see just how powerful this is, is if I set this impact bag kind of on the intersection of that, and now when I set up to do this drill, again, I'm gonna feel like my hands and arms as I swing are just slamming this club down into the ground as hard as I can. I actually put, don't put the, the zipper up on your impact bag. You might actually bust through your impact bag because that's just how powerful your arms are. I mean, think this is how you'd chop wood. You'd have crazy club head speed if you just slam this club down as fast as you can. But that's the sensation we're gonna have. Here, going to the top, and then I am trying to line that club up with that orange stick on the ground, and I am just slamming it as hard as I can down on the ground. I guarantee I could swing way faster than I ever could in a golf swing when I'm doing that. Now, once I've done that, say 10, 15 times, and you get familiar with that, I mean, you can hear the pop on that. I mean, it's got some real power when you're moving that way. Why can't we do that in a golf swing? 
Well, we can. The only difference in that drill and the golf swing is the rotation of the body. So as I start to slam my hands and arms down, at the same time, I open my body up. As my body opens up, now that brings the club face square through the target. So here, if I was to keep my body closed, like I talked about is a big problem with most golfers, I slam that club in the ground, I'm gonna be whacking it in a stick back here. But as I open my body up, look how that brings the club forward. It brings it on plane, and now I can hit shots toward the middle of the green. So again, I'm just gonna slam this into the ground and rotate as hard as I can as I'm doing this. There we go, another good shot, just a little left center. Hit that one a little slightly off the toe, but not bad. That's gonna be over 140 yards probably. With a pitching wedge is not bad for a slight miss hit. So let's talk about a couple of the keys here that are really important when you're doing this drill. Number one, when you're throwing the club, feel like you have a good amount of lag. So what I mean by this is when I'm throwing this club down like this, I wanna feel that sharp angle. Just like if I was gonna chop a piece of wood with an ax same motion, I'm letting that head lag behind and I just let it fly at the bottom of the swing. So I'm not doing this. And to be honest, I wouldn't see anybody doing that if they just let, naturally let themselves try to hit this stick. But it really gets you this feeling of tons of lag. I mean, it makes it really easy to where just, I just swing freely and that ball is gonna have a lot of speed just because my club is lagging so much. I mean, it feels really, really tight, tons and tons of lag when I do this drill. So there, as you can see on camera, very sharp angle with the hands and arms. And again, those are pretty hard hit pitching wedges. Number two, once you start to add the opening, the rotating on through there, this is a big key for almost every golfer I see because when you start to rotate open, what happens with most people? Oh, the club comes outside. I'm chopping this way into the ball. I'm coming down too steep. I'm coming over the top. As soon as I open up my body, I'm steeping over the top. That's where this inside swing comes from. The more I get inside, the more I can rotate open. Now, as you rotate open, when you're feeling like this, feel like your left arm is kind of cinched across your chest. If my hips, my shoulders, my body stops and I'm pushing through there, look how I get the chicken wing, my body, my arm flies off my body. I don't want to do that. That's me stopping my body and feeling like I'm pushing with my hands and arms. Big separation here. If I do this the right way, as I open my body, I feel like if I stuck my hand between my armpit and my, my bicep of my left arm and my, my pec of my left arm into my armpit, so my fingers in my armpit, it would be so tight, so connected, that I couldn't even get my hand out of there. It should feel really cinched in there to where now you're super connected. That's gonna help you to hit a lot straighter when you're doing this also. So again, you see how my arm doesn't fly off my body. I don't get a, a chicken wing when I'm doing this. There we go. And you see how I rotate all the way on through the shot. That's a lot of that because I'm coming through the ball. I'm opening up. I don't have to worry. I can open up as much as I want because the club is inside. Now it's tracking right down the line. Now, number three, what happens if I hit too far behind the golf ball? So a lot of times, let's go ahead and get rid of these sticks. You get the idea of the drill. A lot of times when you start to go more from the inside, that gets you wanting to hit behind this golf ball. The piece we just talked about is gonna help with that. If I hit this tight and I rotate everything open, that's gonna, again, see me grinding out back here, that carries the club forward and it carries my divot in front of the golf ball every single time. If I was to close my eyes, I would still be able to hit that divot in front without even looking at the golf ball. It's just the natural momentum of my body is carrying it out in front. Number two, I wanna feel like I get a little bit of a weight shift as I'm doing that. So now as I open up, everything's gonna be in front of the golf ball. My divot is gonna be in front of the golf ball. So as you're doing this, weight to the left. And again, focus on pinching that arm as you rotate. That's gonna bring your divot out in front of this golf ball every single time. So feel like as you start your transition, even though you're throwing back here, your body is opening and getting up here. So it's two kind of counter, or two kind of polar opposites. One, your arms are throwing this way and your body's opening that way. When you put both those together, that's what kind of gets that slingshot approach to this drill. So let's go ahead and hit one more. Notice how the divot 
is going to be in front of the golf ball. There we go. And that one was really long. Maybe one of the longer ones that I've hit because it was nice and solid. That one went all the way to the back of the green. What was the distance on that one, Q? Uh, 161.2. That's the longest one on there. So I'm telling you, if you do this drill, you're going to be able to, maybe you won't hit 160 yard pitching wedges, but I bet you'll hit them 10, maybe even 15 yards farther than you are now. Now one sneak peek into something that I didn't hit on very much here, but I think is a really cool side effect of this. Whenever you open up your body, so if I get my body rotating open, notice how that gets my hands farther in front of this golf ball. When I rotate my body open like that, my hands are gonna be leading and I'm actually taking a little bit of loft off this club. That's gonna get me higher ball speeds and that's gonna get me more distance. I'm gonna even exaggerate that here and you'll see how my hands are leading the way coming through contact. There we go and I see I hit that one really hard but I took some loft off of it. And again, that one's gonna be toward the back of the green, probably mid 150s on the flight there. But it wasn't because I was flipping. I had this secret kind of opening up and that got my hands leading in front. So follow that key and I guarantee you're gonna hit some of your farthest iron shots ever. Now here's the cool thing with this. What I talked about there at the end is when I open up my body, it's so much easier to get my hands in front. Now, there's a different focus you have when you're doing this you actually wanna focus on hitting in front of the golf ball. That's what we call the straight line release in the top speed golf system. That means that whenever I open my body, my club is lagging behind, I hit this golf ball and my club doesn't release until everything's pointing out in front. I'm gonna play a preview of one of my best straight line release videos. It's gonna help you to get better familiar with that idea. If you tie that into what we do with our drill here, it's gonna become automatic. You rotate through the shot, you release out in front and the golf ball just gets in the way every single time. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. Click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see that card, no worries, just click the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access. I can't wait to see you in the straight line release video. Let's go ahead and get started right now. A common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson, releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar, or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons.